Well, it's an exciting weekend. <laughs> so first of all, I want to thank our great chairman, John Burton. He is a true friend and has always been a fierce fighter for California. I also want to thank Sam Licardo, the great mayor of San Jose, for welcoming and hosting all of us like family. Give it up for Sam. <laughs> And speaking of family, let me say something about our next speaker, Joe Biden, the Vice President of the United States. Joe has given so much to our country. And on, ev on top of everything he has accomplished, he gave us my dear friend, Bo Biden. In fact, it is through my friendship with Bo that I truly came to know Joe Biden, not just as a leader, but as a person. So California Democrats, I say from my personal experience that the Biden family truly represents our nation's highest ideals, a powerful belief in the nobility of public service. Let's give it up for Joe Biden. So now I'm going to get straight to the point. <laughs> so when I was growing up, many of you know my parents were activists in the civil rights movement. And there's something I remember from my childhood that really made me believe in the possibilities of our country. I saw all people of all ages, all colors, all religions, all backgrounds unified in their fight for justice. But when we turn on the TV today, we are seeing something shockingly different. Friends, we have never seen a national election like the one we are witnessing this year. And as if the stakes weren't high enough, now we have the future of the United States Supreme Court hanging in the balance. Indeed, the stakes are very high. And I believe we face a defining choice. It will be a choice about first principles. And it will be a choice about fundamental values. It's about what we stand for as a nation and what kind of future we believe is possible. But just look at the politics of poison coursing through the bloodstream in the race for the Republican nomination. That race has been a race to the bottom. It has been a race to anger, a race to blame, a race to fan the flames of nativism in our country. And then, of course, there's the big promise. They say they will make America great again. Well, in my mind, that statement begs an obvious question. Again, for whom? <laughs> Can someone tell me exactly which part of the past they want to bring back? Because that's exactly what they're talking about. They want to go back. They want to go back on civil rights and voting rights. They want to deny the franchise instead of protecting the vote. Democrats, we know the stakes are too high. We are not going back. They promised they'll reverse the Prop 8 ruling by ignoring the Supreme Court and violating the separation of powers. Democrats, we know the stakes are too high. We are not about to go back on the fundamental right to marry the person you love.
They promised to deny entry into our country for women and children solely based on the God they worship. Democrats, we all know our nation was founded on the rock of religious liberty, and the stakes are too high. We are not going back on our values, and we cannot turn our backs on the Syrian refugees. They promised to go back on the rights of workers to organize for their families and their futures. Now is the time to stand with our teachers who are under attack at the Supreme Court because we are not going back on collective bargaining. They want to go back to allowing coal companies and big oil and big businesses to poison our water and our land. We're not going to let the polluters and their army of science deniers drag us backwards. And they promise to go back to a time when even a victim of sexual assault did not have the right to choose. But the stakes are too high in this election. We are not going back to that back alley. So Democrats, here's what I believe this election is about. It's about moving forward, together. It's about who we are and who we want to be, all of us. We, the people. It's about defeating the politics of poison. It's we, the people. It's about rejecting us versus them and that mantra of yesterday. It's we, the people. To be one people, we must accept the challenge. As President Obama has reminded us, it's the challenge of the founders, the challenge to be a more perfect union, a union signifying we are stronger when we stand together. And folks, we also know we must acknowledge the tragic truth about our past and our present. We know that for far too many people, liberty and justice for all is a promise we have yet to keep. Indeed, indeed, the promise of a more perfect union is what Fannie Lou Hamer was talking about when she said, Nobody's free till everybody's free. A more perfect union is what Cesar Chavez meant when he said, our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and the needs of others for their sakes and our own. So, I'll tell you what all this means to me as I stand before you asking for your support. We the people, <laughs> we the people, we understand our unity is our strength and our diversity is our power. That's right. California Democrats, Together, we can make this a more perfect union, one where our economy works for everyone, including our middle class, and where a minimum wage means a minimum standard of living and a minimum standard of dignity. Together, we can make this a more perfect union, where our children have a genuine opportunity to achieve their potential, where every child has access to quality public education and every parent has access to affordable childcare.
Let's fight for that more perfect union where we don't sink our college students with a lifetime of debt just so big banks and for-profit colleges can bathe in the riches. Let's believe in a more perfect union without mass incarceration of African-American men. And where we all recognize the truth, black lives do matter. And we know what a more perfect union looks like. It looks like 12 million hardworking immigrant families who are finally able to come out of the shadows and where they are able to participate in the full light of the American economy and raise their children without fear. And Democrats, Let's make a more perfect union, safe from terrorism by engaging with our international partners and always leading with democratic values and human rights. And together, all of us, let's make this a more perfect union where churchgoers in Charleston and civil servants in San Bernardino can go about their lives without fear of terrorists with guns. And yes, and yes, where the United States Congress doesn't bow down in fear of the NRA. Let's make a more perfect union by reversing Citizens United, because we know, because we know Citizens United really means Citizens Divided. Together, let's fight for a more perfect union where we rescue our planet from climate change and put an end to oil companies manipulating our laws. Let's make a more perfect union where the law finally guarantees women equal pay for equal work, women of all colors. And whether she be a construction worker or a tech worker or the woman who is the CEO. And Democrats, let's make this a more perfect union by fighting for the ideals of our country, all of us together. Many of you here know I've been a prosecutor and a public servant my entire career. And I've had only one client, the people of the state of California. I want to be a senator for all the people. We know so goes California, goes the rest of the nation. California is looking at us as leaders of this party to continue to lead and the nation is looking at us for leadership. California Democrats, please stand with me, support me in this bid for the United States Senate and let us continue to lead our nation. I would be honored to have your support. Thank you.